Hello, this is Dr. Deeraj Mahasapu. I am a senior consultant in the field of neuroanesthesiology. So today I would like to cover the impact of artificial intelligence, that is AI, on different medical specialities. And it is going to affect and it is going, it's not going to replace you, but it is going to decrease the workforce. That is my opinion. And when it is, uh, for example, X number of people are required to run a particular department, then it is not going to replace all X number of people, but some percentage of people would be replaced because of the efficiency and, you know, uh, it will help you actually in working, right? So you might not require the same number of people to run. That is called workforce reduction. So that can happen with AI is what is my prediction is. So if it is happening, then in what specialties it can happen? See, radiology and pathology is what everybody knows. I will go through that and then they, apart from that, there are many other specialties also which are going to get in one. I will tell you about those things also. So then uh, coming to the, uh, what are the AI softwares already existing first you try to understand. So these are the AI softwares already there. Okay, in radiology there is Google's DeepMind, IBM Watson, AI Doc. In pathology there is Path AI, Page AI. In, derm tech, there, in dermatology there is Derm Tech, IBM Watson, First Derm. In ophthalmology there is Google's DeepMind, Octos AIS, IDX DR. In cardiology there is Alive Course Cardia Mobile, Zebra Medical Vision, Metronics AI. In anesthesiology there is Sedesis, Art and Arteries and Smart Thoughts and in general practice that is the general medicine there is Babylon Health and Umada. So these many softwares are already existing okay and then what I am envisioning is there won't be a linear growth in this. There will be exponential growth in the number of softwares and what they can actually do. So that's because that's how uh, artificial intelligence works. So when the number of uh, softwares and all these things are increasing, there will be an impact on specialities. So let us start with dermatology, okay? So for example, dermatology, if you, oh sorry, radiology. Let us start with radiology. For example, radiologist is actually analyzing a medical image. And then, can AI do it? Yes, AI can also do with pattern recognition, but not to the level of radiologist at present, but in future it might do. And uh, the disadvantage the radiologists have is they get fatigued, heavy workload they cannot deal. So AI can actually process the images faster and it doesn't get fatigued. Okay, so what happens is, for example, uh, as a set of, for example, in a center, there are 10 radiologists. They're analyzing, for example, between 100 images. And then by using AI, 50% reduction might happen and then five radiologists can actually run the show. Okay, so all the complex cases where you need to actually interact with the surgeons, interact with the clinicians and do, so those kind of stuff maybe radiologists will do. Where regular in interpretations are there like X-rays and CT scans and MRIs to get the actual image, AI can do it and radiologists can verify and approve it. So obviously it is more like 50% you know, uh, of people can actually manage with the radiology if the AI evolves to a, a next level. The same way uh, it will apply to pathology also. Pathologist can analyze the tissue samples and diagnose diseases. The same sample you put in AI, it will also start analyzing based on the uh, cancer cells, how many are there, and everything, it will start analyzing. So human interpretation can have some kind of a fatigue and, you know, all those factors AI will not have, right? AI will never get fatigued, it will keep doing. So in that way, pathologist also can have some kind of a uh, workforce reduction when AI is full-blown, okay? So that is about these two. These two many people know, let us go into other specialities, okay? So for dermatology, so dermatology if you uh, take, dermatologists usually inspect skin lesions and then they diagnose uh, diseases and they give some ointments and some are into cosmetic, that's a different sector. Cosmetic obviously AI cannot do. So this particular part of looking at the skin disease and analyzing is what AI can actually do. So AI algorithms are already there, names I already explained, the derm tech and all that. So they are actually trying to, if you upload an image, it will give you some kind of a diagnosis whether it is right or wrong maybe dermatologist can approve so again the workforce reduction can happen even here so that dermatologist can focus mostly on the uh, cosmetic procedures and all that and then ai will actually be doing the uh, boring stuff so that is about the dermatology and then dermatologists if they have some confusion then ai can actually maybe help them in going through the wide database of all the images and it can actually help them in actually getting a better results also in a faster way and teledermatology also can be done with the help of uh, these platforms okay 
So this is uh, this image I created in AI and something like this uh, is going to come up in future. So you can actually feed the skin disease in the uh, AI algorithm and it will actually analyze it and give you a result. You, can, you just have to approve and then see if this is the way the dermatologists are operating then they can work on more, dis more diseases, more teleradial, teledermatology also they can do and so they can actually efficiently manage the department. So with lesser people also they might be able to manage. So at present for example a clinic is having 8 dermatologists and they are seeing 25 patients a day. So AI with its diagnostic skills it might and decrease in the consultation time. Maybe they can manage with 4 people in future. And then uh, next specialty is ophthalmology. So ophthalmology retinal image uh, if you upload it analyze it will tell you diabetic retinopathy grading and glaucoma and uh, there is Google's deep mind which is there for diabetic retinopathy and then uh, also uh, you know mass screenings and all these things also can be done with the help of AI in ophthalmology glaucoma detection monitoring also is coming up now uh, with AI uh, capabilities it will be able to do that and also personalized treatment plans can be done patient education also can be done with AI so ophthalmology also might get affected with the help of AI in the same way okay so now uh, you understood ophthalmology so retinal image analysis, screening, and early detection, glaucoma monitoring, and surgical assistance also can be done with the help of AI. This is by by all this overall impact would be reduction in the staffing requirement. Fewer ophthalmologists are needed to, for the routine tasks, so so that the ophthalmologists can focus more on the complex cases, surgeries, and personalized care. Okay, better outcome will be there. We are not talking about the outcome; we are talking about the staff reduction. So threat is there is what I'm telling. Cardiology also can get affected. You can see ECG interpretation can easily be done by in future. Image analysis based on echo can be done. If technician does echo, then interpretation can be done by AI. Predictive analytics it can use and can actually predict who's going to get cardiac arrest, who's going to get arrhythmias and all that. Okay, remote monitoring can be done. So AI can assist in all these things but can't do interventions, right? Interventions cardiologists would be doing. So all the boring stuff AI would do and again same problem we can happen with cardiology also overall impact is the same so overall impact will be fewer cardiologists are needed to run the diagnostics and, uh, diagnostics and monitoring and uh, uh, the number of cardiologists needed for routine tasks will decrease and uh, complex stuff and electrophysiology and you know, putting stands and all those things they would be doing okay and then the next uh, would be anesthesia in anesthesia, mainly the if AI comes up, then patient monitoring becomes easy and pre-op assessment also it get easier and then pain management scales and everything would become more easier. You can actually develop an AI which can talk to the patient, understand the uh, patient's pain situation and then can recommend medicines to the nurses in that level actually in future it is going to come. Nobody can stop it. And even trainings and simulations would happen in AI. So overall would be fewer anesthesiologists can actually run the show. And anesthesiologists can actually focus more on the complex case management. Okay. And general medicine. So in general medicine, AI is surely going to come. So patients only might enter their uh, you know symptoms and everything into the AI based uh, uh, software which is already existing, which I, I told the names of them in the beginning of the video. No? So then it might give a very accurate diagnosis. And if it is not given, then uh, it will be approved by a general physician once the process is done. Maybe a system can develop the patient will enter that this thing and AI will suggest lab tests and then lab tests will be analyzed by AI and forms a report. The report will be finally seen by the uh, physician so that he can actually see more patients in lesser time. That is what we are talking about. I am not telling to replace clinicians. It is going to improve, decrease the error, it is going to improve the quality, but it is going to decrease the work course. That is what I am thinking. Okay. So these many specialties can get affected because of the AI. For example, this is a hospital, then uh, new hospital, current number of doctors are 76. 10 radiologists, 5 pathologists, 5 AW, like sub-76 doctors are there. And if you incorporate AI, then uh, what can happen is that potential reduction in the doctors would be 39 and 37 doctors would be remaining. This is how I think in future it might happen like this, might happen. So what AI cannot do, also we should know. 
see, uh, dealers and you are telling A will replace doctors. No, A can't replace because A cannot do so many things. In radiology, complex case interpretation in pathology, uh, the interdisciplinary consultations, research and training in dermatology, patient counseling and surgical procedures in ophthalmology, surgical interventions in cardiology, the intervention procedures, placing stunts, electrophysiology, and in anesthesiology, the decision making, the emergency response and all that and crisis management in general practice the holistic care chronic disease management and building relationships with the patient it cannot do so there are so many things it cannot do but at the same time it can do some things it can make the uh, process efficient it can actually make the process uh, you know error free and it will whenever a system becomes efficient by technology that system there was workforce reduction in the history. That is what I am trying to tell. Okay? So overall impact is that. I hope you understood what I am trying to tell. And uh, so what is the solution for this? Solution is nothing. This is the evolution. And we are developing it. And uh, there is no way no, anybody can stop it. So it is going to go in this direction. Let us see how it goes. Okay? Thank you very much. And uh, uh, hope more and more AI is going to build up and make our jobs easier. At the same time, the threat of workforce reduction also is there. Let's see how it goes. Thank you.